Hello, my name is Donia Sogalis, Product Manager for AS Interface Products at Pepperell and Fuchs. Welcome back. In webinar number one, we learned how AS Interface is a simple way to enhance your wiring systems. AS Interface is simple, flexible, and effective, and requires minimal knowledge of bus systems or communication protocols. Today, we continue our webinar series with topic two, Introduction of AS Interface Safety. Our agenda for this presentation has been broken down into the following list of topics. Before we can appreciate the value of safety at work, we need to look back at some of the challenges we face with traditional safety. In this webinar, we will discuss AS Interface Safety at Work in some typical scenarios and how safety data can be transmitted in applications up to Category 4 or Safety Integrity Level SIL 3. Traditional safety solutions were often described by customers as being cumbersome, difficult to apply, difficult to use, and often bypassed. As a result, such projects resulted in extra time for developing the safety applications, extra time to troubleshoot such systems, and additional training for maintenance personnel to keep such systems operational. Let's look back at a traditional safety device. Traditional safety devices were made up of a number of components. First, redundant safety contacts. Second, auxiliary contacts used to help determine the device's state. And third, solenoid locking inputs. All these three components made up a traditional safety device. Now, let's look at a typical arrangement of a traditional safety system. First, solenoid locking inputs had to be routed to output cards of the PLC. Secondly, the redundant safety contacts were daisy-chained to each other and connected to an external safety relay which connected to a PLC input card. Finally, auxiliary contacts had to be routed to input cards of the PLC. After putting such a system together, it became evident very quickly that numerous manual connections were needed. Long conduit and cable runs had to be made, and complex wiring was unavoidable. The safety relay was an external yet essential component in conventional hardware systems, which added further to additional wiring requirements. So what is safety at work? Well, it's an on-machine approach. With AS interface technology, safe-oriented components and hardware move closer to the application, or actually on the machine. Combining I.O. and machine safety on a single two-wire cable simplifies designs and reduces installation time and cost. By reducing the number of electrical connections, cable trays can be significantly smaller and sizes of panels significantly reduced. Simpler systems result in increased uptime at a lower cost. So why consider safety at work? Well, there were, are, are a number of benefits to highlight. One important one is that safety at work can be added to an existing AS interface system as long as the basic AS interface network rules are satisfied. Wire reduction. This becomes clear as we review some of the typical arrangements in the following slides. However, let me be clear. The evolution did not take place all at one time. I will review with you the early stage, the middle stage, and the current stage to see how this growth occurred. With safety at work, a safety PLC is not needed, and therefore some costs could be reduced. The highest level of safety is still achievable with SIL 3 and Category 4 with safety at work. There are a number of safety diagnostics available for monitoring within the PLC. There are 32 safety outputs available on our K30 gateways to be used. Finally, just as we learned with AS Interface Basics, adding safety devices is just as fast and just as easy. One last point to keep in mind 
is that a specific software is needed for configuring, diagnosing, and programming your K30 gateways. This is noted on the slide. So let's begin with the early stage of the evolution. AS Interface Safety at Work is a system that enables networking of safety devices, safety door switches, e-stops, and other safety devices using standard AS Interface networks. In the early stages, the AS Interface Gateway was separated from the safety monitor. However, the safety monitor took the place of a safety relay in conventional hardwired systems. Since the devices connecting to the modules were unintelligent, the actual modules were addressed, not the devices. Finally, one last observation to point out on this earlier stage is that auxiliary contacts were no longer used as with traditional safety devices. As a result, this further reduced some of the wiring required with a traditional safety system. So now, let's see what changed in the middle stage of this evolution. In the middle stage of the Safety at Work evolution, the AS Interface Gateway was still separate from the safety monitor. However, now, the devices that were originally non-intelligent safety devices transitioned to intelligent safety devices. Therefore, the devices were addressed and the modules connecting to the AS interface cable were passive devices and non-addressable. Finally, solenoid wiring was now contained in the cord set, further reducing the wiring of the safety system. In the final stage of the safety at work evolution, the safety monitor and gateway were now combined as one unit. This combination gave the advantage of being less expensive for a two network system and providing the best way to get safety diagnostics from a PLC. Safety output modules were also introduced and viewed as a remote set of safe contacts controlled by the safety monitor, in this case the safety gateway. Two addresses are programmed into a safety output module. The first address, a safety address, is the safe data channel that controls the safe operation of the module. The second address is a diagnostic address, noted as an A or B address, that is used for external device monitoring EDM inputs and diagnostics. One advantage of the safety output module, since it had two safety addresses, multiple modules can be controlled from the safety controller at one time. So now, let's proceed to discuss a typical arrangement of a K30 gateway communicating to a safety input. In this scenario, first the gateway sends a request to the safety input or slave. The safety controller, in this case the K30 gateway, listens for a response back from the safety input. The safety input responds by a four bits of data, like any other I.O. module. But with the safety input, the four bits transmitted from the module to the AS Interface Gateway follow specific rules that allow the safety monitor to determine whether the e-stop has been activated. The gateway evaluates this data in the same manner as the data from a non-safe I.O. module. So now, let's discuss how the prior scenario changes when the K20 Gateway works as a separate unit from the safety monitor. As with the prior scenario, the gateway still initiates or sends the request to the slave. However, instead of the gateway listening back for the response, the safety monitor, the separate unit, is listening for the response back in this scenario. As before, the slave again 
responds back with its safe code sequence. Once the safe code sequence has been transmitted from the module to the AS interface gateway, special rules are used by the safety monitor, again, to determine whether the e-stop has been activated. Now, let's discuss a very key benefit of safety at work called code substitution. Here we have Fred the engineer, who would like to monitor safety inputs and outputs on AS interface that have been programmed in his AS interface gateway using a Simon Plus software. So how are we going to help good old Fred? Well, in the early stages of the K30 gateways, we had what was called safe code substitution. This enabled Fred to collect diagnostic status of safety inputs and outputs using four bits, as noted in the chart of the slide. So the chart reflects if both channels are on and our e-stop is released, we'll see four ones reported back from the input device through the gateway back to the PLC. As our e-stop is pressed, this will send four zeros back to the PLC to report this state. The two intermediate states are probably the most critical because these tell you if one of the contacts on the safety device may have been welded shut. Again. Fred is in a better state now to monitor the status of his safety devices through a static reporting back of four bits versus a random 8-bit code sequence. Fred is still not satisfied with the level of diagnostics he's getting back to the PLC. Well, there is an additional code substitution called diagnostic code substitution. Let's discuss this a little bit further. With diagnostic code substitution, instead of having four bits reporting back diagnostic, there's only two bits now reporting back the status closure of the contacts on the safety inputs. The additional two bits are used now for color. So as we implement our Simon Plus program in the K30 gateway, two bits, the upper two bits of this information back from the safety input device are reporting the color status in the Simon Plus software. So now we're gaining a higher level of diagnostics, not only the, the contact closures, but also some of the status colors reported in Simon Plus software. One key point with diagnostic code substitution is that this is only available with an EV gateway. So keep that in mind as you take advantage of the diagnostic code substitution. Finally, in the presentation today, I wanted to make you aware of some helpful marketing collateral. The first is the Maintenance and Troubleshooting Guide. This was released just recently in March of 2016. The link for the documentation is provided below. This guide provides helpful tips and tricks for troubleshooting and maintaining existing AS interface networks. I encourage you to use this guide because it also includes some helpful links to some YouTube videos that may help further in your maintaining and troubleshooting of AS interface networks. A second helpful document is the product overview guide for AS interface. This was released again this year in June 2016. The intent of this document is really to help you be able to tell the story about AS Interface and all the key components that we discussed in the presentation today. It provides a high-level overview of the product portfolio and the technical features of each of the products offered by Pepperell and Fuchs for AS Interface. So let's discuss how can you connect with us here at Pepperell and Fuchs. There are a number of ways this can be possible. First, the tech support number. I encourage each of you to call us and talk to our applications engineers that are knowledgeable on AS Interface. Through email correspondence, you could use X the Expert and use the email to correspond in this manner. Our website, Twitter, and blogs are also great resources of getting more information on AS Interface. Thank you for coming to the webinar today. Included on the slide is my contact information. I encourage each of you 
to keep in touch with me on any questions, concerns you may have on AS Interface. Thank you.